But when you grew up in a working class area in the, the late 70s and early 80s, um, it was grim. They weren't there to serve you. They were the law. Spent half a lives getting chased by the police from the... We all grew up on the Brotty Wings estate, the three of us, so we hung out together. You were angry about something, but I couldn't quite tell what. Done it for me was uh, seeing the clash on the White Riot tour, and I just thought, I'm going to have some of that, like. But when we started doing gigs like the Bolingbrook Hall and that, that uh, you were getting kids that come along and they used to jump on the stage and sing police oppression and, and, and who killed little. Uh, I had run ins with the police since I was a, a kid, you know. They made a noise about what they hated. And, uh, and that was, you know, the, the unemployment and the fact that there was the desolation of, of the old industries and no support for the people who were coming out of those industries and the injustice of it all, and obviously, in particular, the police. Was more, more famous for being an anti-police band, but the reason behind that was, <coughs> we're just, when we're starting out, when we're kids and Brockley Winds, we were spent half our lives getting chased by the police from the, we used to hang out at the chip shop with Brockley Winds, and uh, used to get a couple of police on the beach just to come along and just chase you, get along, move along, you, you cannot hang out here, well, we had nowhere else to go. They had to protect, they weren't there to serve you. They were the law. They weren't enforcing the law, right? They were the law. And it came to a head with the, the bloke who got killed, Little Towers, you know, which I, I just, I, I just for the life of us couldn't understand how you could be arrested for being drunk and disorderly and then receive injuries the same as a 70 mile an hour head on crash where they were locked up in a cell, you know. Police kill it out. We see that these were not just upstarts, you know, they, they were not just people complaining uh, because they were young and because they were rebellious they, they actually did have something to complain about the way the about the way the authorities treated everybody i've seen kids just i've been drunk getting thrown in the back of a transit van and getting five or six police with truncheons helping them in the back of a van just for being drunk so that was the kind of place we grew up in so we found when we got in the band we could write songs about the police and say anything we wanted about them and they couldn't do anything about it because they weren't going to come to our gigs and try and hit me over the head with truncheons when there's three or four hundred kids in the audience, so... But that's how we got into the, the songs like Police Oppression and Who Kill Little. Our early shows were very, very violent, you know? There was lots of violence for one reason or the other. And then you had, uh, probably, as soon as the violence materialised, then you got the right-wing element who they thrive on violence. I think... The first time we'll come across them really would have been uh, Wolverhampton when there was a bit of a riot and the uh, National Front turned up and uh, from then on really it was a, a, a constant war against them. I remember one gig we did in, um, in Wolverhampton, the Lafayette Club it was called, I still remember, I can't remember where I was last night but I can remember the name of this club and there was a newspaper cutting and it had a punk gig, 17 injured and five stabbed. That was the newspaper headline the next day. But we knew there was something off as soon as we started a gig. There was a funny atmosphere in the place and the first first number there was bottles and glasses raining at where they started throwing up there was like a balcony all around this gig. They started throwing one armed bandits off the balconies. How nobody was killed underneath, I still don't know. But um, I there was five stabbed that night. It was just mental and that was uh, I believe it was a national front. It was a it was a, a well planned executed kind of thing but it, it just turned out to because uh, we I think we've, we've been slagging them off in the papers the National Front but we used to do rock against racism gigs a lot and that, that type of thing so um, there were no friends of ours um, but um, uh, they turned up that night and it was absolutely hell on we had to barricade ourselves in a dressing room at one point and just wait for the uh, <laughs> wait for the help to come I think it was that was pretty scary, that like, I remember. We had heard through the grapevine that Angelic Upstarts were going to be playing on top of the, um, the garage roofs and Broccoli Winds. We just, uh, we just, I had this uh, idea that uh, 
any publicity was good publicity. And I thought to myself, let's just do something really daft, you know. And we got up and we plugged into Boss Coleman's electric, we put the gear out on the roof. We were just, and the word just spread like wildfire, you know, all the kids. And it was a really good audience, you know. And I think we'd done about four or five songs before the cops turned up. <laughs> cops turned up and they were following the wires and everything, you know, looking for where was plugged into and Boss Coleman wouldn't let them into the house, you know. And they forced their way in and uh, unplugged were like, but... And I remember the copper, uh, I saw it, uh, had a lot of deals with him later. He was called Inspector Derek Wright. <laughs> what? Poor Derek Wright didn't know whether he wanted to shit the shit out of here, cut. <laughs> <laughs> and it did happen, but we wouldn't walk through heaven, fr through Jarrow to heaven, from heaven to Jarrow, sorry because uh, of the, all the infighting that used to go on at the time between the different towns. And was something like out the Warriors, if we came through Jarrah, we'd have to get through Jarrow and then we'd have to get through Shields to get to, to the gig. Of all the punk bands, the upstarts have got to have the best name um, because it kind of sums up everything that punk rock was about. Um, the idea that, uh, that they were upstarts, that they were against something, that they were uh, troublemakers. Um, but the angelic thing kind of sums up that there was something perhaps a little more to them, that they were uh, uh, cheeky and attractive in some way. I remember one two that we did, I think we were probably on WA at the time, um, we were due to play Newcastle City Hall, and um, the City Hall pulled it. They said, oh, we're going to have to pull the gig, lads. I found out years later, I was talking to the manager, and he, he said uh, they'd had a visit from the, the Northumbria police. It was called the club squad at the time. And they'd had a visit, and the Northumbria police said, there's no way the Angelic Up starts playing at the Newcastle City Hall. And Bob said, well, I booked them. And they said, well, unbook them, because if you don't, we're going to have your licence. And this is what they threatened them with. They said, we'll hit you for underage drinking, for underage kids using the gaming machines, for noise, people parking outside. They says, we'll hit you every weekend until we have your license, and we will get your license. And Bobby, he had no choice, he had to pull it. But that tour, I remember the tour, we played Edinburgh up in the north, we played Carlisle out in the west, and then we played Leeds. So it was about an 80 or 90 mile radius of Newcastle. We couldn't get a gig in Newcastle because of Northumbria police. So I, I came back to, to, uh, to haunt with that. But um, we couldn't get a gig at the University or the Poly either because they heard about it and just no way we touch were in the North East. Um, so they did get one over on. <laughs> it was only a little thing. <laughs> um. Hi, so Gaz phoned. We need a drummer, Kev. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm bothered learning all the songs again and stuff. But he said, oh, it's in Rome, you know. So I go on and never been to Rome before, so I'll have a go. So had a couple of practices, never the best, but we got it nearly there. And uh, I found a plane to Rome. Gaz's 50th birthday, two litres of vodka disappeared on the plane. And then on a day off, play the gig on the Saturday. Uh, the gear was terrible, falling apart, and we managed to put it together. By the time we got the play, it was like one o'clock in the morning or something. Everybody was sick, half asleep. Got on the stage, all the other bands had played. The gear was even worse. And the <clears throat> thing with upstarts, Menzies really good at like judging the crowd. And it, if it looks a bit leery, he normally warms it up with summit, summit not too wild. So we'll come on stage, crowds going mad. Bottles flying, drinks, a bit leery, and I thought, oh, he's going to warm up with something. And he just turns to Dickie and says, police oppression, crow go mad, I'm just like, I'm having this. Hey, 
The size of the men and poor Shame of son of the happy on the floor Police, police, police in Russian Police, police, police in Russian The crime, you do the time, there's a lot of kids don't stand on line. Listen, cover, don't push your luck. Lord, they take, don't give a fuck. When you ask for respect, give some back and fight for yourself. Police, 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 pressure. Police, 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 pressure. Police, 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 police